just laying down. A couple of good deep breaths. Deep inhales. Exhales. Feel how the body is just settling into the space. A moment to set this next hour aside from everything else. As we're taking these deep, full breaths, we'll take a moment to connect with our intention. The intention today is all about how there's a lot of harshness in the world. And a lot of times it starts internally. If we're harsh to ourselves and our thoughts, then it's natural that we turn outwards with that same energy to, to others. And sometimes it's actually easier to be nice to others than it is to be nice to ourselves. So think of the messages that we give the cells of our body and imagine that it, instead of being a character in the story, we're becoming the author of the story. So imagine the cells take on whatever role we give them. So if we're constantly telling our body, I'm inflexible, I'm weak, I'm not able to do this, imagine that that's the, the story that the characters or the cells of our body then play out. But what if instead, we gave our body gratitude, loving messages, and we consciously worked on trying to be kinder, more positive to our body. Imagine what difference it would make. So instead of saying, oh, my hamstrings have always been tight, that's just how they are. Maybe instead, it's more of, I'm working toward length, toward strength. We're coming, we're, every day we're getting a little bit closer to my goal, my vision. And just how that feels just a little bit different. So that's our thought today, our, our cells taking on the messages that we send it. And so trying to be a little bit more conscious and aware and kind. And so with this idea to help keep this on, let's begin to take the knees into the chest. Let's rock on that pillow back just a bit. Here we'll start to spread the arms up to left and right. The knees are stacked as they fall over to the left. And give the muscles of the back a couple of breaths to take on this shape. Notice if it's, if the body is telling you anything. The two-way journey. And notice what you're telling your body. So if this stretch right here feels amazing, you're welcome to just stay in the twist. Otherwise, you're welcome to build up cat chasing its tail with me. The top leg straightens out to the side. The left leg is extending the, or right leg is extending the left hand slides up the back side of that leg as high as you can reach. Maybe to the toes, maybe not. And then the free right hand grabs the free left toes behind your back. That knee tries to point to the base of the back. That chasing its tail, a twist, a hamstring stretch, a quad stretch, three things in one. Is your right shoulder supposed to be on the ground? You try to return it as close as it can get. So it might be a little lifted, but try to have the intention of getting it closer down. And that's where the twisting part of it comes. And how deep the breath can go into belly. Soften the knees into a bend shape. Let the knees rise back up. And we'll take the twist to the other side just to get started. So the knees fall to the right. And just stay there for a time. So 
something about moving the body that just helps the cells feel more alive. Like it's hard to pinpoint how, how that feels, but it's almost like more vitality, more liveliness, just from taking a couple of stretches. That's what keeps us coming back over and over again, that type of yoga magic. Another breath just in the twist. And then the top leg is going to start extending out. If you're taking the cat chasing its tail, right hand aims for that foot or just resting on the back of the leg. Left hand to the right toes behind your back, and then the knee pulls down. Three and one. And you don't have to take all of it either. You can not have the quad part of it. As the body's settling into the shape for a little while, we can think of an example that's similar to our intention today. Um, if a person who is a little overweight starts to go to the gym to make changes, a lot of times they're very self-conscious and they maybe think that other people are judging them. But from my experience, I noticed that people in the gym tend to be super kind because that's a person making changes in their life. They're, you know, they're, they're trying to do, to make their story just a little different. So that's, sometimes we project thoughts onto others that are harsher than they actually are. And maybe that's why there's harshness inside too, sometimes. But think of it from the other perspective. If that person's trying to make changes, they can be grateful, they can be happy and expansive inside. And then they'll start to see perhaps the evidence of that external as well. Take two more breaths right here in the belly. Crazy how just thoughts shift everything, the whole perspective. Okay, start to release the knees back to a bent shape. Let them rise back up. Rock around on the low back and just notice perhaps the story our sacrum normally takes on is kind of a twisted thing, but after that deep stretch, that pull through the low back and the hips, notice perhaps the sacrum being a little bit happier now. Good. So let's extend right leg up to sky, moving into hamstrings. Left leg can drop down to ground, nice and long. Grab onto that top leg. Try to invite the leg to extend upward. Inviting in a new story for hamstrings. For me, this is one of those notorious spots. It's one that I've been working on for a while to just find length. take the visualization of what it would feel like or look like the future version of yourself that has this hamstring as long as it possibly can get. It's gratitude that we're taking steps to head. And let's release right leg, drop it all the way to ground. Left will start to lift. Add on to it. Invite the hamstring longer. Invite the heel to lift upward if it can. Length through the back of the leg. Maybe even arm strength pulling the whole leg a little bit closer. Just finding the spot where it feels good, but also definitely stretching. Leave this leg here muscularly as we release the hands. The right leg will hover above the ground. The hands come together to touch, and then we're allowing the arms to touch the outside of that left thigh, kind of crunching up. Good, as the arms rise up overhead, switch the legs. 
Let's do the crunch, arms touching the outside of the right foot. Nice and slow, inhale, exhale, crunch up. Inhale, arms overhead, leg switch. Exhale, crunch. Bring it a breath pace. One that works for you. Twice more each. Practicing kindness if we need to skip some reps, nothing wrong with that. Beautiful. And then legs come up over head, both of them, open them out wide, rest hands on the inner thighs, and know that you can have bent knees instead if needed. Strengthening poses like that bring on a that type of vitality we were talking about before may be slightly different than the feeling of a stretch type of vitality, but both work to kind of enliven the cells. It's like a little gift that we can give the physical body is this movement and the strengthening. Good. Let the knees return to a bent place. They come together. We're going to roll like a ball two or three times. A massage for the back. Back up to balance. And back to massage. Maybe two more. After that second one, stay in a boat pose. Maybe hands stay on the legs. Maybe they release. Maybe the knees stay bent or extend. Two more breaths. It's all good. <laughs> and cobbler's pose. Turn the feet down, left spine up to tilt forward. Only relax the weight of the spine back down when you can't go any further. shoulders still at first. Start to rock the right ear to the right shoulder. Right in the center and then left ear to left shoulder. Back up to your center. Fingertips on the floor, start to walk them over to the right. You're not trying to lift up left hip, but you're walking the hands over toward the right until you feel in the left half of the low back in a nice stretch. Gradually walk to your center. Or the left, whatever depth feels like the perfect amount for the right low back. And returning back through the center, two extra breaths. Starts to rise back up. So we'll lift the knees. This left one is going to stay planted in front of us. The right one extends forward. Left hand plants behind us. And then this right hand, as it circles up like a rainbow, we try to lift the hips and then set back down. So we'll do that five times. So lift and lower. Yeah, there you go. You got it, Dan. And lift. And three, two, 
one. Good. Setting the hips down, let this left knee um, fall back open. Arms to up to the sky, let the spine get tall. Exhale, tilt to work. Notice small differences in how we focus the energy on this right foot. So you'll notice if you point the foot, you feel a stretch on the top of the foot area. Or if you flex the toes and the ball of the foot back, it joins the calf into the stretch. So kind of be playful with this. Extra conscious, extra aware of exactly which version we're choosing. Switch the legs. So at first, the right knee is, is upward, the right hand is down. And we're gonna lift up with the momentum of this left hand. Rise and hips up. And down. Here's four. Three. Two. One. Good. The thigh falls back open. Circle the arms to the sky. This helps to engage the rectus spinae muscles on the back. And that grabs the sitting bones, pulls it back as we lean forward, which means the hamstrings are in the deeper version of the stretch. Belly breath all the way in and out. All right, rising up. Both legs come underneath us. We're kneeling. Let's make some cat cows. Rounding spring up. And belly down, gaze. Move it at your own breath pace. Last one, tuck the toes, lift up to downward facing dog. Start to add some movement to the legs. Eventually coming up to top of that forward fold. to rise. Beautiful. I'll face the same way as you. We're going to do an arm kind of shoulder warming up thing. So start with the arms up overhead. As we turn our torso to the front door, left hand goes forward, right hand back. Continue the circle through the bottom, and then we meet back up facing this. Good. So now it's right hand forward, left hand back. Continue the circle, and we're back up to the top. Good. So I draw, and up. Draw, and up. If you're kind of getting the motion of it, eventually you can kind of drop the weight of the arms down and drop. Good. 
Two more. Last one each. Good. Relaxing the arms down. Clasp the hands behind the back. Pull the arms back. Kind of rotate the shoulders back. Good. So kind of pecs are opening. Soft bend to the knees. Start to set the belly down onto the thighs. And then see if the arms can continue to pull a little further back. Beautiful. Release the hands, go down to the floor. Let the legs start to lengthen back. As straight as we'll get right now. Half lift, hands slide up the shins. And drop back down the floor. Right foot slides the back of the mat. Keep the right hand on the floor, left hand reaches to sky. And left hand returns down. This front leg lengthens as straight as it can get, and then comes back to that bench. Do another four. Three. Two. One. Good, and then step this foot back into three-legged dog, left leg floating. Step the hips, then the knees, and the toes back to your back. Still a bent knee, coming forward into plank, knees, toes, hold. Yeah, set the left toes next to the right, plank. Back bend of your twice. Can you see any of these things like foot or cobra? Child pose or down dog. Next to top of mat. Sliding hands up the shin, inhale. Exhale, fingers down. Left foot travels to back of mat. Left hand stays on the floor, right hand comes up to the sky. And drops down, the front leg straightens much as it can and goes back to the Three, four. Three. Two. One. And plant the hands, three like a dog, right leg in his back. And travel with the toes behind your back and feet. And a plank, knee to nose. And toes down, child pose, down dog one. Oh. to knees if we're not there already. <clears throat> we'll take dolphin. So elbows are down. One hand makes a fist. The other hand hugs around the fist. Tuck the toes, lift the hips, and walk the toes in as much as you have the flexibility for. This puts the strengthening side into the shoulders. So feel the shoulders continue to lift. At any point, if before I'm done, you're ready to drop down and you'll take it to child pose. Otherwise, a couple more breaths. A 
And if you're not a child already, lower down. Let the arms just extend forward, forehead rest down. up to kneeling plank or full plank. We'll lower belly to the floor. The right arm extends out to the right. And then the right cheek is on the floor. Press the left hand into the ground until you're in a right shoulder stretch. So you might be stacking hips. The top leg might even trace back behind, just kind of rotating on the floor behind. It's just going as deep as the shoulder knees. Our hips return to the floor and switch it out. Left arm extends, left cheek is down. Press until you're in the left shoulder stretch. down, pressing our way up to a high kneeling place. I like to tuck the toes because I feel more control if I lean back, but if that's uncomfortable, you can switch that out. So with this one, our hands will be starting off floating in front of us. It's neutral, easy kneeling um, to get started. And then it's like a backstroke. One hand circles back, you will lean back, quads are engaged, and then circle back forward, easy breath. And left arm. And right. Moving not only through shoulder, but also the strengthening of quads. Another three. Three. Two. Two. One. One. Beautiful. Dolphin again. Elbows rest down. Tuck the toes, lift the hips. Option to stay in stillness. Option two, lift one leg and then lower it down. Second leg and lower. Or option three, kick a leg up with momentum and then softly land back down. Same as before, whenever you're ready for child, you can rest. You haven't lowered already, take a moment with child. Looking forward to plank or kneeling plank. Lower belly back to floor. And this time starting from a sphinx position, the elbow slide underneath you. Yeah, go ahead and lower, sorry. <laughs> You're taking it nice and slow motion, good job. Okay, so belly pulls through the center. And then we'll use the sphinx position to set up for the opposite side of a shoulder stretch from what we just took. So swivel the hands in parallel to top of mat, right arm in front. Walk the right hand to the right, or right hand to the left, left hand to the right. See how wide you can get the elbows to each side. And then I like to rest my chin down, but I usually have to kind of tuck my chin first and then rest. So that way I still have lots of space for my throat for breathing. If you're not in a shoulder stretch or as much as you want, bump elbows forward another inch.
walk the elbows in. We'll switch it out. So left arms in front. And then same thing. Walk each hand off the sides. Tuck the chin to rest it down. And just breathe. Second, find the hands underneath your shoulders, maybe a cobra for a moment. Tuck the toes, lift up down and facing the Feel the extra circulation, the extra vitality flowing through the shoulders. Easing forward, slide bend to the knees, step off or jump up to top. Forward fold. Inhale, rise, circle the arms up to sky. So the shoulders rotate through their socket and come down to the heart. Shifting weight over to left foot, grab the right hand to raise up behind your back. We're moving to quad stretch. So if you're not already there, pull the knee backwards or scoop the tailbone up. Good. Yeah, using wall is perfect. Side. Make sure you feel the quad, so either pull the knee back or scoop the elbow under. And release. The toes close, so slightly separated. Back at the heart. The back of towards front door, left wrist or left elbow hook in the right side. Switch sides. Maybe a little lower. Inhale. Exhale. Circle the arms up to sky, slight back, then straighten the legs. And the heart. Right knee floats. You can balance here, or you can take the left hand to the outer right thigh, just the right hand back. Turn, hands to heart, take the leg back or you're free. Maybe the arms also extend forward. Soft land warrior one. And the hands to the hips, straighten the front leg. Keep the hips work forward, so shorten stance if you need to. We're bowing forward into the pyramid. Hands eventually can shift to shin, blocks, floor. And just to lengthen that leg. Engaging the quad just a little bit, the kneecap lifts. That helps the hamstring go deeper. Don't lock it though. Knee. Circle the arms back up, warrior one, if called. Warrior two, exhale. Extended side angle, lean forward. Warrior two, reverse. Warrior 
through two. Triangle, straighten the front leg. Lean the left hand forward and then drop the shin. Right hand to sky. Slight bend to the front knee. We're called cartwheeling down to half moon. So landing left hand to the outside angle of the foot. Shoulders to hips. Hip lock. Whenever your balance is about done, land both feet together. Just relax the spine down forward. Inhale to rise, circle the arms up. And down to heart. Floating the left knee, you can stay here or take the right hand to the outer left side. Left hand twisting behind. So forward, hands to heart. Pick the leg back while you breathe. Maybe the arms reach forward. Soft land warrior one. Hands to the hips, straight the front leg. Hip square the hips forward, so shorten stance if needed. Soft forward pyramid. Eventually lowering shin blocks floor. Warrior one. Inhale. Exhale, rotate open, warrior two. Extended side angle, right elbow to right thigh, left arm up and over. In a warrior two. Reverse. Two. Triangle, straighten front leg, reach forward to drop down. Good torso up, slight bend to the knee as we cartwheel hands down, half moon pose, right hand lands to outside angle. Stack hips, shoulders. Up. Exhale, forward fold, the feet round down. Invite the spine down. Maybe even think of the crown of head trying to lengthen down. Up to sky, let's down to heart. One more standing balance, either going into that quad stretch we did before or heading to dancer. So shift weight to left foot, grab right hand to right foot behind back. So quad stretch is the same as before. Pull the knee back or sweep elbow under. If you want dancer, come to balance with the left arm. Kick the foot into the hand and create the back foot shape. Inhale, exhale, release. Slide the hands down to the thighs, half forward fold for just a moment. Little break for the low back. 
Good, soft bend to the knees, come up. Side to the side, grab left hand, left foot, come back. Quad stretch is fine. Or, yeah. Good. When you're ready to release, go all the way down to forward fold. And that relief spine. Right hands up, shins, and help, half foot. Help plant the hands, right foot slides back, lower the knee. So options here are quad stretch if you want to. So that would be left hand circling back to the back toes. Or if that's not what you're wanting to go for today, you can just focus on this right psoas, perhaps by thinking hips forward and lifting spine up. So your focus, your choice. Scoot the hips over the back knee. The front leg lengthens forward. Either taking a nice half slit or anybody who wants to scoot that front foot forward a bit further for the last one here is fine to do so. And take three more breaths if you're up. Back. Taking a downward facing dog. Go through the legs, shift or shake things out, whatever feels nice. We'll briefly lift the right leg up to sky to land that foot between hands or the back knee. So options like before, maybe grab the back toes or just sinking the hips forward, maybe rise up past the thigh. That good so as stretch. Half split or scooting a little closer to full split choice. Ready to come back, maybe kneeling this time or another down dog. to left knee forward in pose. So whether you're kneeling or down dog, you shift to that shape either way. Make sure you have scooted the back leg back so hips are as close to ground as they can get naturally. And make sure you're not tilting to one side as you come forward. And just resting, breathing. breaths. Send a compliment to your body. 
such humble and honest to be. Switch sides, so plant to the hands, heading to kneeling or down dog. Two sides of motion. Kneeling, it's just hip circles or wagging the tail. Eventually, right leg forward for pigeon, however, you need to get there is fine. perhaps the message I love you and listening watch my that changed the world we all started with then I love you and listening shape, kneeling or down dog, however, the hips, the legs need to move for just a second. Into a seated place. We'll extend the legs out in front of us. Knees can be bent if needed. We'll take a forward fold over two legs. So when we get there, inhale, circle up. So exhale, tilt forward. The bent legs would just be the version to help it, the spine not pull the hips back. one where the hamstrings are in one of the deeper stretches because they're both being stretched at the same time. So it's easy to make this a rough story where it's like, well, in other stretches, I'm so much better and, you know, talking rough to yourself. But instead, just be appreciative. Wow. At least I'm at this point. Maybe stories of where we can get our stories of gratitude. One more breath here. Walking back up. One more stretch, wide legs. Walking the hands forward and through. Welcome to stay here for a couple of more breaths. Or if there's different stretches you want prior to Shavasana, you can start taking those last things. At some point, we'll settle into our Shavasana shape. No rush to get there. It's a little journey. A game of listening to our body, eventually heading. 
Never a rush to be in Shavasana. Also never dictation about exactly how Shavasana should look. Just do what feels good. Eventually when you are there, imagine that you're starting a love letter to your body. I love you. And fill in the next couple of sentences. The mind will rest back down, just focusing on the breath for the next few minutes. Easy inhales, easy exhales.
beginning to deepen inhales and exhales. Start to introduce movements back to the body. Continue a love letter to your body. In a few more sentences. Stretching out or eventually taking a fetal position if that feels nice. Eventually coming up to a comfortable seated place, but no rush. here, the hands at heart, reconnecting to our intention. We try to be just a little less harsh, a little more compassionate. Then it starts with our body, our thoughts toward it, our gratitude toward it, our compassion toward it. So with this message of I love you, I'm listening, this idea to help lead us on, let's wrap up the time we shared together with a sound of Oh, deep in hell now. May we be filled with light and happiness and peace. Namaste. Yeah.